everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a blue cheeseburger. If you love blue cheese, gorgonzola cheese, and this is probably the video for you. If you care, if you don't care for those cheeses and you want something else, I would recommend feta, cheddar, American, you know, those types of cheeses. So if you wanna know how I make my blue cheeseburger, then please keep watching. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the meat. This is a 1.18 pound package of meat, and then you're gonna season it. I'm gonna use garlic powder, and a little bit later, I do go back and add some garlic salt as well. I'm gonna also add some Lowry seasoned salt, some black pepper, and a little bit of pink salt. I'm gonna put in a few dashes of Worcestershire sauce. This gives it a nice tangy flavor, kind of deepens it up a little bit too. After you've added whatever spices you choose to use, you can mix it at this point. Now, what I should have done looking back was chopped the onion first, then added it, added the cheese at that point too, and then mixed it by hand. That way I wouldn't have to wash my hands in between and it may have saved a little bit of time. I used about a quarter cup of onion, so you can use about a quarter cup if you like, or if you wanna use a little bit less or more, go ahead. It is completely up to you. So the blue cheese I'm gonna use is from the Kraft brand. I don't think I'm really partial to any brand specifically. This is just what I saw. I was in a hurry at the grocery store and I picked it up. So um, if there's a better one out there, let me know. You know, it doesn't really matter as long as it tastes like blue cheese and it's good, then it's probably what I'm gonna pick up. So I used a little over a pound of meat. The package said 1.18 1 pounds. And this is a five ounce can or a little tin bin, whatever you want to call it, of uh, blue cheese. So I'm probably going to start with half of this and I'm going to see what it looks like after I'm finished measuring and if I want to add more than I will. So I like to just kind of do a little bit at a time so I don't over add um, and I'm going to show you what all that looks like. So here is my five ounces. I'm just going to pour about half of this in there. We're going to start with that. So that is about half, and we're just gonna mix it up. I took off my rings too, because I do not wanna get all that meat and stuff inside of them. So we're just gonna mix this up, and the blue cheese will crumble a little bit inside, that's fine, but it's gonna melt so nicely. You're just gonna have to wait and see. And I couldn't resist, I did add a little bit of garlic salt. I just really wanted to make sure I had the flavor that I was going for. But um, earlier I did use a little bit of garlic powder. So if you just wanna use one or the other, then do so. But you know me, I love my salt, but I promise I'm not over salting everything. I do take into consideration how much sodium I am consuming. And um, you know, that's nothing to worry about. Okay, so while my pan is heating up, I'm gonna start forming the burgers. This right here, I said was like 1.18 pounds. So I could make probably four good sized hamburgers out of this. They will cook down a little bit, as you'll see when I'm cooking them, but I think four would be enough. If I can maybe get five, if I can squeeze out a little bit more than I will. But I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that this will make four good sized ones, and we'll see what we can, we, what we can make out of this. So, I'm just gonna start by grabbing some like this. And I just kind of move it around like this in my hand in a circle, like a ball form. And then I start pushing out toward in the middle toward the outside in like a little form of a patty like that. And I do like to make sure that it doesn't look like there's gonna be any big tears in it or cracks. Um, so I want the hamburger to stay together as best as possible. 
So this may make more than four, but I like to do mine just a little on the smaller side. That way I'm not worried about them not cooking evenly all the way through because you don't want them to be way too thick because you do want to make sure the inside cooks as well and not just leaving the outside cooked and then the inside raw. So I'm just going to start off. I'm going to stick with this size here. These are probably, I would say third pound burgers. I'd say third pound, I guess. I'm going to finish with this. And then I just turned my cast iron pan on. You guys know I love cooking with my cast iron. And by the time I'm finished with this, it should be ready to go. So my cast iron pan is nice and hot now and I carefully add the burgers. I do put a lid on top and let me know below if perhaps I should have left the lid off. When we grill burgers we normally do it on the pit outside so you know this may not be the best technique but anyways I'm going to cook the burgers for about four to five minutes on each side. You just kind of eyeball it because I just want to make sure if they're cooked thoroughly because I am pregnant I do not want to eat any raw meat. I realize these do not look the prettiest because they did kind of fall apart a little bit but I promise you the flavor is still there and like I said earlier maybe having the lid on it was not the best idea but you know trial and error is all what cooking is about. So I just took the burgers off of the stove top where I was cooking them. They are cooked now, so I'm just gonna let them rest for a few minutes. But in the meantime, I'm slicing up some tomato here. And then I also have some lettuce I'm gonna slice up also so I can put on top of the burger. I'm gonna toast the buns as well. So here is the burger. I just took it off, put it on my bun, and I added my tomato and lettuce. But I just wanna show you a close up because it smells and looks so delicious, I cannot wait to take a bite. But this is it. Okay, this is a few hours later. I am recording this, but I did want to because Robert is home now and I wanted to wait to cook his till he was home so they could be nice and fresh. So we're doing something a little different. We did make them a little bit thinner, as you can see here. I think this may help them cook a little bit better because it is on a stove top and not you know, outside on the grill, that may make a difference. I just put them on the cast iron again, it's nice and hot. And then I did put the lid back on. I did cook them for about the same amount of time as I did mine earlier. So this was about four to five, I would say about five minutes on each side. And look how pretty these look. I think doing them a little bit thinner worked better, but these look amazing. And the next few clips is just me putting them together for him. And he really, really liked them. So I'm sure I'll make these again. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this meal. Let me know if you make it and how it turns out for you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.